and, and you know, have we really stopped to think about lately what it is that God has done for us? We see that, that it's not because of the fact that we are deserving people. It's not because we've done anything to, to deserve God's love or whatever, but it says that in His great mercy... And because God is a loving God, because He has looked at us and realized that, hey, you know what? We need a little bit of help. It's all about the mercy of God. That's something that we can be thankful for. But it says that He has given us new birth into a living hope. In other words, listen, the moment that you recognized your need for a Savior, that very instant that you became aware of the fact that, that hey, we're all sinners. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. That's one thing that all of us have in common. And, and the moment that we recognize that God addresses that and that, that God sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever, the moment that you said yes to Jesus, that He has given you new birth. In other words, you have now been made a child of God. You're now God's child. And you've got the Holy Spirit of God now living and breathing inside of you. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and so that gives us what, what the Scripture calls a living hope. In other words, it's something real, a real handle in this world of uncertainty. In this time that we live, that things continue to, to be more and more uh, seemingly chaotic and out of control. This is our living hope that as long as we live and as long as we breathe, this is real. This is something that we can hold on to that no one can take away from us. And he says then in, in verse 4, and into, listen now, an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. You know, not only have we been given new birth, not only have, has God made us his child, but one of the privileges that goes along with that is that there is an inheritance waiting for us in heaven. An inheritance that, that can never rot. That can never spoil. I, I was out at our, our camp yesterday. And it was sort of a, a, a nasty job. I didn't get in on the real nasty part of it. Somebody else did the real nasty grunt work of it all. But I remember when we, we used to have kind of a, a back porch, <coughs> excuse me, that, that we would drive the four-wheelers under and then that's where we stacked the firewood. And I remember the day that we decided, hey, let's close in that back porch and we'll turn it into an extra bedroom and we put a little bathroom in and it kind of really made the camp more usable. And then on behind that, we built a, a little mud room. And man, when we built it, I remember, you know, we used treated two by sixes for floor joists, thinking that, man, this thing will just be here forever. It'll last. There's no way that by using all this treated lumber and, and this good stuff, this thing is not going to rot. We're going to, you know, kind of get over on the fact that it's a little damp and a little moist and whatever, and, and we're going to do this right. Well, then dad put his foot through the floor. And, and all of a sudden we realized that what we thought we were doing correctly, what we thought we were doing right, was all rotted out. And, and what we have to, to hope in is the promise from Scripture that that will never happen to us in God's economy. We'll never be disappointed. We'll never get to a place in our life where somehow, some way, somebody will say, listen, heaven really doesn't exist. You know, when you die, you're really not going to have anything to look forward to. The scripture says that, listen, it is an inheritance that can never perish. 
And we're never going to put our foot through the floor of a rotten inheritance in God's economy. It is something that we can count on. We can bank on the fact that God's word is true and that the things that he promises to us will never disappoint us. Now how many of us have experienced things in our life that has really rocked our world? I mean stuff that I thought I could count on that wow, it just kind of blew up in my face. Have you been there? I mean I have. Stuff that I never really ever even considered. You know, just stuff that, that would just always kind of be there in my life. All of a sudden, the rug gets pulled out from under you and you end up falling flat on your face and you get disappointed because something that you were counting on went away. Sometimes it happens in relationships. Sometimes it happens in jobs. I remember I had a, a pretty good job one time and uh, never dreamed that it would ever go away. All of a sudden I showed up at work one day and the, the boss's wife looked at me and said, hey, by the way, do you have your keys with you to the shop building and everything? I said, sure. She said, good, give them here, you're laid off. It just rocked my world. I never even thought about that happening and I'm sure you guys can relate. Maybe you've had someone in your life that you thought really loved you. And then all of a sudden you get to a place in life and, and boom. It just sort of blows up in your face and you're just sitting there thinking, where did that come from? Man, what happened there? And, and, and it hurts. And it's difficult to go through and, 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 and it's hard. And it makes us not want to trust anybody else. You know, a lot of people have had that kind of experience in church. They, they've been in a church and all of a sudden uh, somebody hasn't treated them right or, or somebody that they know in church, they also know them out in the real world and they, they see how they live and they think, oh man, you know, he pretends to be one person <laughs> in church on Sunday, but I know how he lives Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And, and, and we get disappointed with all those things. Life can be a big letdown, amen? The scripture says we don't have to worry about that when it comes to the promise of our inheritance. I've got a mansion just over the hillside in that bright land where I'll never grow old. You see, we can bank on the fact that what God's word promises us will actually be the way it is. The Bible says your inheritance can never perish or spoil or fade and it is kept in heaven for you. Did you know that Jesus right now, one of the things that he's doing is he's building your place? One of the things that Jesus told his disciples that he was going to be doing in John chapter 14, he said, I'm going to go to be with my Father in heaven. And he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Did you ever stop and think about what your house might look like in heaven? I want one with a view. I want to be looking out the window and I want to be able to, to see. And, and I just, have you ever stopped and really thought about what will my house what will my place in heaven look like? Hey, Jesus is right there. He's making your place ready. So my question to you this morning, are you ready? Are you ready to go and receive your new home in heaven? Because that's what we can count on. It's, it's kept in heaven for us. Listen now, here's verse 5. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Did you catch it? Listen, because you've exercised your faith, because you've said yes to what the Bible teaches about how we get saved, about placing our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, because we've said yes to that, then listen, look what it says. It says we are shielded by whose power? By God's power. 
How many of you have seen the news lately? Lots of bad stuff happening, amen? I mean, stuff that we, you know, really never contemplated that we may have to deal with. I mean, ugly things. Ugly things. How many of you saw that, that now Israel is, is kind of, you know, really almost at war with, over in Gaza? I mean, they're shooting rockets back and forth at each other. I mean, stuff just sort of seems to be spiraling out of control. Here's what God's Word says. Look, because of your faith, because of what God has done for us, we're shielded by His power. What does that mean? That means that until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time, hello, newsflash, there is a trumpet that's going to sound. All of God's people are going to be called home to go be with Him, to meet Him in the air. That, because of your faith, is protected for you. That means no one can take that away from you. No one can steal that from you. That's a guarantee by God. That's going to happen. You can count on it. You can bank on it. You can take that one home with you. That it's God's power that protects that for us. So no matter how messed up things get here in this world, no matter how out of control life seems to spiral for us, one thing that we can count on is the promise that we have in God's Word that we're going to make it. We're going to be okay. By the way, we win. I read the back of the book and we win. We're the ones that get to spend eternity with a real God in a real place called heaven. And that's protected for us until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time. In other words, we say right now, hey, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm saved. Well, saved from what? Saved from the judgment that is eventually coming upon the world. That judgment that will in fact someday be revealed where remember the story in, in the book of Matthew where God separates the sheep and the goats. I, I'm sorry but that's going to happen. And if we really <clears throat> truly got what, what it is that we deserved well, we wouldn't have a whole lot to bank on. We wouldn't have a whole lot to stand on because each and every one of us really deserve punishment because of our sin. But praise God that we have a living hope found in Jesus Christ because His death paid the payment for our sin in full. So when that salvation that is going to be revealed at the end of time, when that is revealed, what, what this scripture is saying to us is that we have no worries. We have nothing to fear. We have a place already reserved for us in heaven. Remember, it's not because of anything that we did, the first verse. It's because of God's mercy, because of his love towards us and so we pick it up in verse 6 and, and it says that, that in this in other words with this knowledge knowing this having this great living hope understanding that wow hey finally there's something in life that we can count on this is not going to be one of those things that I'm also going to be disappointed by this is the real deal in this, it says, you greatly rejoice. That's why we can sing songs like we sang today. That's why I can stand up here with all of the meaning in, in my mind and, and with everything that I am, and I can truly sing the song that says, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. See, I was broken. I'm a sinner just like everyone in this room. And there was a time that if I would have died in that sin, things wouldn't have worked out so well for me. But thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. And so it says we, we greatly rejoice 
Though, and here's the, 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 the reality check, though for a little while, though now for a little while, you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Remember the song, I never promised you a rose garden. By the way, I'm not a singer, don't claim to be. And uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to quit my day job. Okay? But, but, you know, God's Word, one of the misconceptions that many people have is there's so much prosperity gospel, you know, being preached on the television said, oh, so your seed of a, a thousand dollars in life is going to be rosy and everything in your life is, is going to work out. And, and we hear that kind of preaching, but that's not the reality of life. The reality of life is that a real lady named Cassa Beckwith, who is a believer beyond all believers, is right now going through the trial called cancer. And, and the reality is that life is going to get tough. There's going to be stuff that we have to go through that even, yes, as Christians and in our faith, is going to seem very difficult. The scripture says so. Listen, we have now for a little while, you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. But it says that these things have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which which perishes even though refined by fire, in other words, gold perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. In other words, no matter how difficult life gets now, when Jesus Christ is revealed, we're going to look back on it and say, you know what, compared to how awesome this is, up here in heaven, really that was nothing. That was just a vapor of time that I went through those difficulties of time. Boy, look at what I have in, in my new inheritance in a real place called heaven. And yes, it's going to get difficult. And, and yes, we're going to have struggles. And that's one of the real reasons that we desperately need one another. You say what you want to say, but boy, I tell you what, it's nice when somebody comes along and gives you a hug and says, hey man, hang in there. It's going to be okay. Hey, hey man, hang in there. I'm, I'm praying for you. Or what can I do to help you? Or, or we're just being there for each other. That's part of what God has taught us that we need to do. Verse 8 says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Listen. This is part of our benefit. This is part of what happens when we become Christians. Verse 9, For you are receiving the goal of your faith. And what is that? I mean, why do, we why do we show up here? Why do we turn the electricity on? Why do we carpet the building? Why do we try to have a, a place to worship? Why do we try to present ourselves to the community as a real place that has answers, that is the light of the world? Why do we do what we do? Because listen, we truly believe that there is a legitimate outcome called the salvation of our souls that's worth fighting for. See, we believe that's still the answer to many of life's problems. Uh, it's not an economic issue. It's not a political issue. Listen, it's a salvation issue. Hey, you can have all the money in the world sitting in the bank, but at the end of time, when, when, when it comes time for your soul to go and spend eternity in heaven or in a place called hell, what really matters? It's not going to be how much money you have in the bank. The goal is... The real deal is, what have you done with Jesus? The reason that we're here is to experience not only the salvation of our souls, 
But those little books that are floating around out there, I tried to get you to take the rest of them. There was only a handful of them left. The Gospel of John, the salvation message. It's not just about us experiencing the salvation of our souls. But it's about us helping as many other people find that answer as possible. See, that's what it's all about. And so, listen, if we really are receiving the goal of our faith, if you really have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you truly are in line to receive the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul, then you have something to be thankful for. And, and you can agree with David who wrote in the Psalms. And, and by the way, uh, if you haven't noticed, if you've never read the story, listen, I'd stack David up against me or any of you for being a very messed up man. See, David was a messed up man living in a messed up world who did a lot of dumb things and who was guilty of adultery and murder and a lot of things that none of us have even come close to doing. But listen, he finally found his way. And he found his way back home in a relationship with God. And in fact, God said of David, this truly is a man after my own heart. And so listen, I don't care what your story is. I don't care who you've been. I don't care how bad it's gotten and how ugly things have ever progressed in your life. Uh, right now is an opportunity for you to make all of that be erased and to place yourself in a position to receive the goal of our faith. You see, you can have the salvation of your soul. And, and when that happens, when we're that kind of people, then we can say, I will praise God's name in song and glorify Him with thanksgiving. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. So we don't just sing these songs to sing because we need the practice to sing. Listen, we sing these songs because we actually believe that the message is true. And we truly are thankful Lord, for saving my soul. It's a time where we're able to express back a little bit of our appreciation to the great God who loves us and who has saved our souls. And then we can truly enter His gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. And we can enter His courts with praise. And we can give thanks to Him and praise His name. Yes, even in the midst of a world gone crazy. In, even in the midst of, uh, of a time where right doesn't seem to be right anymore. And, and wrong seems to be more right than right is. And when we have more confusion about the right way to go, then we have answers. That's the culture that we live in. But see, we don't have to be caught up in that confusion. We can know beyond any shadow of a doubt that we truly have something to be thankful for. And it's our real, live relationship in Jesus Christ. And so here's a scripture for us to close with. To take this thought, to, to have this mindset as we leave this place today. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Remember Jesus' words? He said it. I will never what? Leave you or forsake you. He's right there with us to help us through. Do not be anxious or overcome by anxiety about anything. But in every situation by prayer and petition. That simply means we verbalize our prayer requests. We make them known to God. With thanksgiving in our hearts. Present your requests to God. And listen, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. A year ago when the diagnosis was cancer, and the prognosis was a long road, and a lot of people don't do so well with that radical of a surgery, we can still have hope. We can still have the peace that, that goes beyond our circumstances. 
Whatever your circumstances are in life right now, however desperate the situation is, maybe in a, in a relationship or financially, maybe it's a, a job struggle, whatever the situation in your life is right now, the scripture teaches that, that we can have the peace of God that is a real and a legitimate peace that goes beyond your circumstances of life so that we can truly have a spirit of thanksgiving in our hearts. And how should we be spending our time? How should we be helping to encourage that mindset in our lives? Well, we should be thinking about whatever's true and whatever's noble. See, right is still right in God's eyes. See, the, the truth of God's word hasn't changed. God hasn't rewritten the Ten Commandments. And so when, when we focus our attention and our time on what is right and what is noble and what is pure and what is lovely, anything that's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, that's what we're supposed to be thinking about. That's how we're supposed to be investing our time and our energies is meditating and thinking about those things. Good wins out over evil. Evil really isn't the right way to go. Wrong is really not the right pathway for us to choose. And it says here then in verse 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or another preacher or read from the word of God, don't just know it in your mind. Don't just have some kind of a understanding or a head knowledge, but it says put it into practice. Let it really matter. Let it make a difference in who you are. Let what God's word says trickle down into the hands and the feet and the lips of your life. Let it make a difference in the person that you are. And if you'll do that, if you'll put into practice trying to be obedient to what God's word teaches, then this promise and the peace of, and the God of peace will be with you. See, God doesn't bless over top of sin. He never has and he never will. And so when we want to position ourselves so that we can truly experience the outpouring of God's blessings in our lives, it's a simple formula. Understand what this says and then to the best of our ability, live by it. And when we do that, we have the promise of the God of peace that will walk with us through this journey of life. And when that happens, we know we've always got something to be thankful for. Amen? Amen. Let's come up and, and sing our last song and, and, and put ourselves into a, a mindset of being thankful and, and I, you know what, as you're spending time with, with family, whether it's today or, or whether it's Thursday, you know, an awesome thing to do is to, to just take a few moments of time and just go around the table and, and give each other the opportunity just to express at least one thing that you're thankful for. Just think about the, the, the great things in your life that you have to be thankful for. And let's be people who truly let Thanksgiving exist inside of our hearts. Let's stand. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give
the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. I want to pray for you before we leave. I want to ask God's blessing upon your life, upon your minds, upon your souls. And so I'd ask you, invite you to uh, just bow with me as we uh, close our service in a time of prayer. And, and, and if you have a, a particular need that's just weighing heavy on you, uh, I'd like to pray specifically for you not this morning mentioning you by name but in my times of prayer uh, throughout the upcoming week I will definitely um, breathe your name to the Lord so if you're if there's something that's on your mind or on your heart that you have a, a particular need and you'd like to be remembered specifically for a time of prayer this week just slip your hand up so I can identify who you are and uh, make a mental note of spending some time. Anyone else? Is there a specific need that you'd like to be prayed for all over the, all over the building this morning? So let's pray. Father, you are truly amazing. I thank you for your love and your mercy for us that would cause you to look beyond our sin and to, to see us in such a way that you took compassion upon us and loved us enough to give us your son. Lord, my prayer this morning is that everyone in this place can truly, truly be thankful because they have received and accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, that's the goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls. And so, Father, I pray right now through your Holy Spirit that, Lord, if there is one here in this place that has never really done that or they're, they're just not sure where they are, maybe they said a little prayer one time, but they're just confused, Lord, I pray right now that you'll let them experience your Holy Spirit knocking on the door of their heart. Lord, that they may say right now, yes to Jesus. That they can truly uh, leave this place with thanksgiving in their hearts. Knowing that as messed up as the world is around us. That there's one thing that they can always count on. And that is your word and your truth. And the hope that we have that one day we will be with you. Lord I pray your blessing especially on each one that raised their hand this morning. Lord I know that there are difficult things that we walk around with in life. And I know that in our humanness, sometimes we struggle to be able to, to get through them properly. But I believe with your help that we'll be able to carry on. That even though now for a little while we'll suffer grief through the things that are trials in our life. That we'll be reminded once again that we have a living hope that we can look forward to. That will give us peace in our hearts that will go beyond the difficult circumstances of our lives. Make this true for each one here this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.